let's dive in. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by rolling up my sleeve. And the reason for that is because there's a lot to cover here today, and I don't mm -hmm. want to be slowed down by my sleeves. All right. <laughs> Please. So, so let's dive into topic number one. We're gonna be talking about a general uh, economic update. But before we really get into that, I want to give everyone kind of a public service announcement around tax reminders. This year is the year in Canada. If you're a real estate investor, you have to file the UHT form, underutilized tax forms. They're a pain in the butt. If, you're a, if your accountant has filed your taxes already, they probably have done it. But if you file your own taxes and you forgot to do it, the good news is, is that deadline recently got extended from tax season 2023, which was in April of this year, it's got pushed back to October this year. So you ha now have a little bit of a window where you can do this. Uh, so just check that out. If you're a real estate investor, you don't want to miss that, Patrick, because you don't want to pay unnecessary penalties for nothing. Well, and I want to add to that just because I've talked to a couple of members who had their accountant wanting or asking their accountant to do that work for them, and they got a quote on it. And uh, not all accountants are created equal when it comes to filing those forms. So I want to encourage you to make sure you're having a conversation with your accountant. It should not be costing you a few thousand dollars for, let's say, 18, 20 doors, 15 doors, 10 doors, whatever it might be. It's literally uh, many accountants are out there just going, listen, you're a client. I'll do it for 50 bucks a door kind of thing. I'm not saying necessarily that low, but don't overpay because that has been happening. So I'm not sure what's going on in the accounting world, but it's not a standard cost. Speaking of taxes, let's dive into part of that economic update, Patrick, for this particular show is the recent announcement just last week that uh, the government's announced they're removing GST on new capital investments in affordable rental housing. And uh, break this down, we actually have a really cool chart uh, and a graphic to show essentially what this represents. Because I think the first thing everyone kind of jumps to is, oh, does that mean properties going down 5%? Am I gonna save 5% on everything? The answer is no, it's not quite that good. So kind of break this down for us in terms of what we can expect people are gonna save as it relates to this new uh, waving of GST. Well, I don't think we can say what are people going to say when we have to look at the builder and say, what are they going to save? And, you know, what this is going to do is probably offset some increases in wages, for example, or some supplies. I don't think there's going to be a huge, I, I, the intention of it is, I think, good. It's, you know, to incentivize builders to keep going, bring their costs down a little bit. But it, depending on the builder, depending on what they've got going on overall in their operation, I don't think it's going to net out to a big number. I mean, some are saying as little as 1%. Some are saying it's not going to make a difference. So it depends on how you view it. And uh, some analysts, if you will, are saying, no, this is a great move by them. And, and I, I don't disagree, but I don't think it's as big a move as you know they're making it out to be which is often the case they're kind of overstating it but i mean you look at it for yourself you know when you look at yourself as a as a developer i mean what is it going to do to your bottom line do you think i mean it's helpful but it's not going to be a game changer well it's not going to be a game changer but i do agree it's going to relieve some pressure no doubt about it it's definitely going to help with uh, with some of that upwards price pressure it'll give that you know i think what it will do patrick is i'm not sure prices are going to come down what I think it might do, I know for us at Vistra, for example, if I really dug into the numbers, I think what would happen is you would see, okay, less pressure to raise your prices. As a result, you can kind of stabilize your prices. And that would be a good thing for things like inflation if we could stabilize the prices. But listen, the rule is that they're just coming out with is there's no GST, which is 5%, on all materials and services. Listen, there's a lot of materials and services uh, in a build. And uh, saving 5% on all of that is definitely going to have a material impact. Now, is the government overstating the, the success of it? Of course, that's their job is to sell, sell the crap out of it. And so they, so they should. But, uh, but I do think that I, I, what I like about this, though, Patrick, I'll tell you from my perspective, A, as a real estate investor, B, as someone who you know, is at the effect of a lot of this, it's actually, in my view, the proper incentive. It is an incentive that is driving the market in the right uh, direction. And I think that this is much better than other kind of rebates and stuff that's very difficult for people to cash in on. This just applies across the board. And this for me is a good incentive that I think a lot of people can capitalize on and it's going in the right direction. Is it the perfect incentive? No, but I don't think a perfect incentive exists either. What I do know for me, it's an incentive in the right direction. 
Well, there's a couple things around it. I mean, we don't need to beat this to death, but you know, it is also based on property type. So when you look at the scope of, you know, rental properties are already on the incline. So in other words, their 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 building has been increased. You know, when you look at multifamily apartment type buildings, they're on the rise. That's actually, you know, some of the primary construction that's going on. So, uh, but it doesn't apply across the board to all multifamily, for example. So we just got to be a little bit careful about, you know, what it really drives. I think that, you know, as we go through the segment, we'll start to see where what the government is intending to do is get housing and get people building and builders on, on board to uh, increase supply. I mean, the intention's there, but I think as investors, we have to look at it and go, what is the impact of that? It's going to take years, like years and years to uh, really to notice uh, a difference in terms of what we've got for the supply side of it. So uh, I think it's a little bit, you know, some could say too little, too late, but ultimately they're going forward. They have an intention of getting supply out there. It's just going to take a long time to feed through. This is one thing. There isn't one solution to supply. These are little incremental changes that can be made. Yeah, there, there is. Uh, there's no doubt. It's, it's always too much. You know, it's always too, too much, too late when they're making the changes on the way up, and it's always too little, too late when they're making the changes on the way down. So you can expect that's going to continue. That's just the way the government machine works. But uh, to me, I think it's a good, it's a good step in the right direction. I'd rather have this than not have this, uh, which is, you know, which is good. Could there be better incentives? Sure, there could be, and hopefully we get more down the line. Uh, interesting to see how this is going to go. So that's a really good, I think, good start for real estate investors. Yeah. Now let's transition to consumer price index. We here's here's kind of the general market feel. I've been on the phone all morning, in fact, with various investors, and uh, here's a general market feeling. You know, early September rolls around, and uh, and good news, the Bank of Canada decides not to raise rates. Yeah. So the kind of market kind of goes like, oh, right. Like, I mean, emotionally, I'm not saying pricing. I'm saying emotionally, the market starts to go up and people are starting to think, oh, this is going to be great. We're, we're going to go on a bit of a run here. Good news. There's a report on TV with some very bad news. And then <laughs> not, not two weeks later, we get that the consumer price index has come out uh, and it was 4% year over year. And I just felt like yesterday when this news, when this headline hit the news, I just felt like the the air come out of the tires and everyone's emotions went, ah, no, this means they're probably going to raise rates at the end of, uh, at the end of October. The good news is, is we're going to get the next inflation reading, I believe before they make their decision to raise rates in October. So hopefully we get some good news, uh, but this is where it's at right now. Well, I think there's, you know, there's no surprise that it's come up. We've talked about this several times, you know, that um, we're, Inflation is not as much as they making it about interest rates and consumer and housing and all the rest of it. You know, central banks are hard pressed right now. They're not going to control inflation because they can't control oil prices. And, you know, we've talked about this many times, JG. When we look at what's happening in the market, oil continues to rise and it will continue to rise, which is going to drive transportation changes or charges, which is, you know, the cost of fuel, or the cost of transportation, which affects the cost of food and uh, that's the biggest impact and certainly some of the cost of goods that it takes to manufacture and or to operate including inventory so the the point of that what i'm making there is that inflation is not going to come down in a meaningful way for a very long time i would say that if they raise rates here's where they're stuck here's where bank of canada is going to be stuck is that if they raise rates it's not going to impact food it's not going to impact fuel and it's not going to impact the cost of oil uh, we've got China right now, and let's just give a little bit of background on the oil. You know, China is building their reserves. In other words, I think they got 1.2 billion barrels of oil on reserve that they've been accumulating over the past couple of years, whereas the U.S. is kind of tapping into their reserves. They've got, I think, less than half of what China has is some of the reports that are coming out, which is all to say that China has got their plans for whatever they see into the future. It's impacting the oil price. As long as oil continues to rise, we're going to see inflation rise. Now, here's the thing that Bank of Canada is going to bump into. If they raise rates, <clears throat> which there's some risk of doing that, they're not going to have an impact on inflation. But what is already happening, businesses are slowing down. We're starting to see unemployment tick up a little bit. Not a big concern yet. But if you look into the future, you have to kind of say, where is this going, given what's happening economically? So some would argue that we are already there. 
But I agree with one fundamental analysis, and that is I think we're heading into a period of stagflation where we will see unemployment rise. We will see inflation continue to rise. And, uh, you know, is that, is that a prediction, Patrick? Do we do we do I got to mark this as a prediction moment? I kind of think it is. I kind of feel like it is. It's not a prediction. It's a concern right now. I think that's the direction we're heading, given the trend of our economy. Gosh. And so will the Bank of Canada raise rates? They might because, you know, I just think they might. But uh, that's the concern that I would have is if they do raise rates again, uh, we are destined for a period of stagflation because raising rates is not going to change the cost of food and fuel and which and cost stag of goods. Stagflation is is. Extended periods of stagflation uh, obviously are not good at all. Uh, yeah. But but as the economy slows and as the you know as we get back into balance here, I think a period of stagflation is actually inevitable. The question is how long is it going to last for? And you hope it lasts for as little as possible because stagflation means that the economy is shrinking, but inflation is going up, which is not good because then you're the you know the the average economy, the average people is feeling it double because things are going down as an economic output and prices are going up. So things are really getting pinched. Uh, the question is, I think it's inevitable it's going to happen for a short period of time. I just hope it's as short as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we're going to go. So from in the context of what we want to you know, share today, what does it mean to investors? And I think that's what we got to get to from a real estate and uh, you know, growing your asset base. You know, real estate's still a great opportunity. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. You got to be more precise, but the opportunities are there. And I encourage people don't get scared off the field. That's we, what will tell, right we will tell people exactly what they could be doing towards the end of this episode. So stay tuned, folks. Uh, but Patrick, I want to say one more thing about inflation, which, you know, I hate talking about inflation. It's so boring to me. I could literally just curl up and go to bed right now. But uh, four percent uh, of the four percent twenty uh, report by RBC just came out. Twenty five percent of the four percent, i.e., one percent inflation, is caused by the higher cost of living, uh, specifically in housing, which is caused by higher interest rates. My point is, is, the Bank of Canada, as you've pointed out before many times, is fully responsible for one percent of this four percent. If it wasn't for the higher interest rates, it would be three percent inflation not 4% inflation. Uh, the RBC just came out with that this morning, in fact. Well, and, you know, to add to that, you know, we talked, I talked about food and fuel and, you know, the cost in rising, but also it's impacting the cost of rents because, of course, rental housing providers, you know, investors are having to pass on those increased costs, including interest costs. And interest is about a 30% percent of 30% of CPI. The point is, is that rents are rising. And also what we're starting to see, however, is they're starting to uh, see smaller and certain markets are actually bumping up against the ceiling of higher rents. And in some cases, they've come down. That was a recent report out of Kelowna, by the way. I don't have exact numbers, but in Kelowna, rents are actually coming down just a bit. So it's softening. So it's an interesting dynamic that's happening in different centers across the country. And actually, in, uh, in a couple minutes from now, we will cover the regionality of real estate and, and we'll show people through some incredible technology that you can now see the regional differences between prices and rents and property demand and market conditions. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So we'll show you that in a second, folks. Now, Patrick, this here chart is a uh, is the price of oil just to kind of show essentially where it's been since uh, I believe that's 2014. Uh, the ups, the downs, currently at 92.36 at the time we took this uh, this chart. Yeah, and and I spend a lot of time in this space and listening to any number of pundits. And although the analysis will vary depending on who and what expertise you're listening to, it all comes back to seeing that uh, oil will continue to rise. Some are predicting very, very substantial uh, rise in oil. Uh, well over 100, some are suggesting even like into that $120 range. I don't know. I just know that based on what's happening in a global scale, when you see what's happening in China, Russia, uh, even India, for that matter, what's going on in the U.S., uh, we're starting to see that oil will continue to rise. And uh, I think that it breaking 100 bucks a barrel is a kind of a almost I'd be shocked if it doesn't. And hopefully it doesn't, because that is driving 
uh, inflation. That's another. Than that's another prediction. I'm going to put another. Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm uncomfortable with that as a prediction. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna ask the video uh, the producers here to make like a Patrick prediction index. We're gonna call it the PPI, the Patrick prediction index. And we've had yeah. two predictions here in this. Now there's more to come. We're gonna do another prediction on condo prices here coming up. So so stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. Uh, Patrick, this particular chart here, uh, I thought was interesting. Take us through it. Well, you know, this is really simple. You know, when we look at bond yields, five-year bond yields are kind of the benchmark for what's happening. They've spiked again, uh, which is going to impact and has already impacted that five-year uh, fixed mortgage term. So this is, you know, not good news. And uh, some banks, I think, were up 045 and they're starting to uh, have an impact on those mortgage rates. And this is really the tough one, you know, depending on uh, levels of comfort. Uh, we start to see that investors are having, well, homeowners too, but people are having to make tough decisions. And ultimately that tough decision boils down to my payments are going up. So these are all things, again, that also impact the economy because there's less uh, discretionary money to be spent. And we're starting to see you know, people having to get from underneath the weight of the payments that they're carrying. So uh, these are all, you know, this is just what's going on. And, uh, you know, again, I don't have any predictions for this. This is a, uh, who knows where this is going to go. If you like what you learned here, go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter, where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.